Hey, what's up, guys? It's Apollo Chia here, back with a new part of what if Naruto was separated from his family. And today is going to be a double upload as well. I will be uploading the next part of what if Naruto, a mother's love, as well today. So yeah, stay tuned for that. And if you haven't, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you like the content of this channel. And without further ado, let's continue with our story. He's alive. The Ondaim Hokage is alive. Kona has done for. These were the thoughts of everyone in the elemental nations who were still glued to their televisions watching the battle. Konoha Gakure, as the Hokage lead his troops outside the bunker, Narumi and Minako led their opponents towards the arena and waited for their parents to flash in. Mio and Miho also battled their way there. Due to the shock of seeing someone who's supposed to be dead, the higher ranks and sensor types of Konoha, Kumu and Iwa army didn't notice the armies of Suna and Oto there, the sealed dome. They were practically surrounded, even if they wasn't in a barrier. They were only brought out from their shock when Orochimaru walked towards Kushina and stood beside her. It is done. Kiri is now history. Gas from the leap, stone and lightning were heard. Minato smirked evilly. I see. Who goes next? Hmm. If I may suggest, we let Kumo experience the Harishin. After all, Eva's already had a taste of it. Let them watch it on a different point of view this time, said Kushina. Ah, a good suggestion, replied Minato. Well then, what are we waiting for? On cue, Minato, Kushina, Narumi, Minako, Miho, and Mio threw out dozens of tri-pronged kunais on all directions, scattered them all over the confines of the village. Everybody else were just too shocked that not only Minato knew this technique and weren't able to react. Kunai Kage Bunshin no Jutsu A finally got back to his senses and immediately activated his lightning armor level 4. He was about to Pummel Minato but found himself pinned down by none other than Tsunade. Damn it, she's too strong. Mass Harishin! The Rakage could only watch in horror as yellow flash, red, orange, blue, and white combined appeared everywhere, leaving a trail of dead Kumo Shinobis. Videdara and Sasori. Damn it, hmm. I wasn't finished showing them my art yet. They are cursed as flashes surrounded them and killed Kumo Nin. Whatever, hmm. They're still Eva. Perhaps I could show them the error of their ways before they die in off my art. Stop ignoring us, roared Sasori. Ah, yes, yes. Hmm. You and your puppets against me and my beautiful clay work. The winner shall be the one to show true art to Eva. I'll fight you. Hmm. I'll show you true art. No, you won't. I will. Doesn't see three dragon. With Yahiko and Hidan. Damn artists and their art. Grunted Yahiko as he overheard Deidar and Sasori's proclamations while he avoided Hidan's psych. I know, right? They've been spotting about their art ever since we started fighting. Why are you agreeing with me? It doesn't matter. You'll be great offering to Jashin-sama. Ah, yes. You and your Jashin. you always been spotting that ever since we started the battle. Die! The Jashinist yelled manically as he charged with his psych raised. Yahiko stood around and calmly withdrew several scrolls from his vest. I may not be an Uzumaki, but I'm proficient enough with explosive seals. After all, I was the first person to have taught Naruto Funjutsu. He chuckled the bombs towards the charging Hidan, who merely swiped them away with his sights. He got hit by some of the explosives, but Yahiko's astonishment, the priest didn't bleed. Small chunks of flesh and skin were blown away, while the Jashinist pressed on under deterred. Muhahaha. He done laughed hysterically as he neared Yahiko and brought down his weapon. Yahiko jumped away to avoid getting sliced. Shit, shit, shit. So he really is a zombie. The fucker is not bleeding. Repent now. He done said maniacally with Conan and Black Zetsu. I'm not a man of words, so let's keep the talking and proceed to murdering each other. You're a woman and I'm a plant. We're no man of words. Whatever. Win style, four point paper star. Nagato versus Kisame. Hmm. That sword of his supplies him chakra, so no ninjutsu. I can't also allow him to get close to other people or he'll absorb their chakra. I wonder what happens if I try to send jutsu. I'm gonna kill you. I'm not a tuna. I'm a shark. You're still hurt from being called a tuna. I guess I should rile him up further and allow him to throw jutsu until he runs low of chakra. Water release. Water bullet technique. Gakairo. Petropod. Isame had no clue what happened, so he just sent another jutsu. Water release, exploding water, colliding wave. Hokkaido, Petropod. Ah, you're absorbing my techniques, so you're like me, eh? I need to draw him out more. Come, little tuna. 
Kasame then slammed his palm on a small puddle that formed. What a stall! Rainwater shock wave! I see what you're doing. You're isolating our battle. You're making a mistake. Okay, good. He's not thinking of absorbing other's chakra then. Their game of cat and mouse continued until they reached the border of the ceiling dome. You're done for! Water release! Great explosive water colliding wave! Water prison shark dance technique! Ah, damn it. Hmm. Where's that water breathing pill? Ah, here it is. Blah. Tastes like uncooked shark. I can't hold this prison up uh, for three days. Can you hold your breath that long? Just then, Kasame noticed. Nagato breathing calmly. What? Let's see who's faster in the water. Your shark form or my modified water dancing technique? Kenjutsu Ward. Uzumaki style underwater waltz. Back with the Kages. N no. My army. My people. A wailed for a moment before he quickly pulled himself together and punched Tsunade, who was pinning him down. Kishina immediately engaged Sarutobi once the slaughter of Kumo ended. Minato then chose to close in with Jirai as his opponent. You monsters! Ugaku screamed, his eyes morphing into the Mangekyo form. Attack! His orders were followed by the Uchiha clan behind him, their Sharingan even blazing into life. When we will not be astounded by them. Go! screamed Hiyashi Yuga. Destroy the Uzumakis! An equal number of Uzumaki storm and joined in clashed against the red and white eyes, Nin of the Leaf. They were led by the former Uzukage, Harashi, whose eyes were now purple. It was a battle against Tonjutsu users, Orochimaru's POV. While the old leader of Iwa was still gaping, horrified, Orochimaru nodded to his army as well as Baki, who in turn signaled to Suna army. They then attacked the Iwanins, who were now low on morale, having just witnessed a whole army become destroyed in only a matter of minutes by the same Jutsu that defeated them in the last war. Obito's POV. Obito just warned anyone who stood in his way. His spawn and plans were not totally ruined. His mercenary army destroyed. The same could be said with the Zetsu clones. White Zetsu was able to inform that the clones' army were now unresponsive. Those were the last that he heard from the plant man until he too stopped responding. Something else or someone was now controlling the White Zetsus. The only ones he had left were his generals and Black Zetsu, who were engaging on their own signal and single battle. When he saw the purple ringed eyes on the high ranking Verpulin, a new plan formed in his mind. There was a whole army of them with the Rinnegan. He could do a lot more and faster. He was about to attack an unsuspecting Uzujon, but his path was blocked by the now grown up child he tried to murder years ago. You're not getting your filthy hands on the Rinnegan, Uchiha scum. Sandam Spiove never in his life would Hiruzen have imagined the Uchiha and the Yugas fighting alongside, and yet they were. What's more, they were fighting against another clan with a Dojutsu. More so, they were against an army of Rinnegan wielders. I think that the Sun name considered a myth. Right now, he was fighting one-on-one -on -one against those purple eyes in leader, Kushinana Mikaze, who of course had the same eyes. His summon Enma left the Sen the moment the Uzumaki's eyes turned into Rinnegan, so he was left to rely on his ninjutsu without he aid of the staff. With the Senju brothers, his and Nan Shodai and Nandaim were given temporary time back to life. Hashirama after being released from the Edo Tensei, felt his connection with the Zetsu clones. Having been briefed by Minako about the creatures, he gathered all the dogs and ordered them to copy his forms. There were about 30,000 left. Tobirama stayed with his brother to absorb the clones. With the Idaran Sasori, diffused clay bombs and broken puppets lay around the ground for a kilometer radius. The two self-proclaimed art masters were now down to their main and strongest weapons. Deidara was preparing to level their battleground using his new technique, the C5, a wide-range type of attack where a clone of himself with 90% of his chakra will blow up. It was based on a C4 that was technically a suicide technique. This time at least, while very chakra taxing, he had a clone to do it. Sorcery, on the other hand, had the mother and father puppets out. His first creations were still with his grandmother Chiho, the ones that he had with him were now and were made from his parents' corpses. The corpses were presented to him by Obito a month before the Chunin exam. Instead of asking where he get them, he just thanked the man and began turning the corpses into the strongest weapons. He had discarded the puppet Yuriko and used his parents as his new shell. You really are fucked up in the head, sorcery. Turning your parents' corpses into puppets? Die! For someone who's about to join my collection, you're too talkative. That's because you're talking back, hmm? Kinjutsu, C5! You won't get me. These puppets are ten times tougher than Hiroko. Ultimate protection. Activate. Offensive attack. A million poison metal particles. They that a clone charged towards Sasori. The puppet opened their mouths and released a dark mist towards Sasori. The bomb caused everyone inside Konoha to stop what they were doing as the ground shook and the bomb produced a blinding flash with the Jinchuriki. 
Muhaha, that's how you do it. Blow the shit up, cried the one-tailed demon. The giant tanuki then faced the Hokage monument. Shikaku, wait, no, Bijudama. Looks fun, Chame. Let's do it too, said Fong. Bijudama. Eh, whatever. Two is enough, said Utakata. Good, because I want to blow up Kiri. Well, yes, perhaps later. For now, an alternative. Let's blow up that water dome. Then Nagato will be able to protect himself. Right. Bijudama. That certainly is an improvement, Kurama said, as all of them started to turn into a fine bubble rubble mountain. Hashirama Oji-san, not going to be pleased, his face was blown up, said Naruto absent-mindedly. Naruto, our job here is done. The Konoha Nin are back up. Sasuke and his friend atten attention caught him. The four Jinjurikis returned to their human forms and were assisted by their guards as they went straight to the now raging battle of the Purple and Leaf. With Yahiko and Hidon, Yahiko was thankful for the distraction created by Deidara and the three-tailed beast. He was sure he was dead if the Jashinist hadn't been interrupted. Hidon had been able to acquire some of Yahiko's blood. Damn, this thing sure moves fast enough with this huge psych. So far, my explosions haven't actually worked since those threats kept on retracting back his body parts. Damn it! How come I forgot about these partner, Kakazu? Silent thanking the guards he saw Naruto jumping down beside him. Yo, Yahiko-san, I'll take on the creepy tentacle old man. You blew up this priest. Right. Thanks, Naruto. No problem. Naruto then glared at a certain spot on the ground. All right now. We know you're here. I know you wanted a rematch with my great-grandfather, but he's busy with the Zetsu Sloan, so you'll be fighting me. I have Mogetown too, you see. I'll guess you'll have to do. I hope you do not disappoint, Kakazu said as he finally came out of the underground. I'll fight the priest. Somewhere else. Summoning technique. Right. Let's go, yelled Yahiko as he summoned dragon picked up the shrieking Jashinist. With Conan and Black Zetsu, the woman and the walking garden, the battle was quite simple. It, while it devastated the arena, the fight went on as the Black Zetsu lashed out masses of black plants based attack while Conan hacked them down while using her wind-infused origamis. If she wasn't defending herself, Conan was cutting off Black Zetsu's parts. The battle lasted quite long as Black Zetsu had the same amount of chakra as the two-tailed beast. Black Zetsu was cut, sliced and slashed but kept on growing more, more lost limbs. However, Conan made critical hits that damaged the creature's internal cells. Black Zetsu was aware of this but had more difficulties repairing internal parts than external. And so, the deep cuts eventually destroyed the cells that helped him rejuvenate. It's over. A sea of paper wind plates. The technique was similar with Naruto's trust in shurikens. Conan's version, however, was based on million tiny compressed papers infused with wind chakras, tightened into a ball instead of the Rasengan's plain pure raw chakra. When released, the ball decompresses and explodes outwards. Lexus's body was destroyed. Not only a single cell survived, as they were also cut into millions of pieces. Now that's what you call art, Conan murmured as she moved along. And found new opponents with Nagato and Kisame. Due to Seiken's tail beast bomb, Kisame lost his hold on the huge water dome. He had to manipulate the water to protect himself. Nagato was able to escape the attack by being reverse summoned to Terra. When he returned, he now had Sage Mode activated. Unlike the Tor Sage Mode that turns unexperienced users into stone, the Dragon Sage Mode turns unexperienced users into liquid fire. Nagato went on to release a Sage Mode fire jutsu. The moment he saw Kisame extract himself from a crystallized sphere. Ah, finally using Jutsu now, we see? That's good. I'm quite in need of chakra, and Samihara's starving. Kisame grinned as he raised his sword. Try digesting this. Sage art, dragon's breath. Muhahaha, <laughs> that's it. Kisame cried in delight as Nagato spewed majestic golden flames from his mouth. I, what? What's wrong, Samihara? The shark skin sword made detaching noises as its spike stood out and went. Back in Kisame's, later dropped the sword. Due to the intense heat, it was beginning to melt. A few moments later, there was only a shark shaved molten metal on the ground. Bastard! You killed my sword! You've been too dependent on your weapon and allowed yourself to get distracted. Now you're loose and alone, Nagato stated as Kisame was suddenly swallowed by a molten dragon. Sage art, molten dragon trap, sage art, magma walls, sage art, dragon breath. With Naruto and Kakazu. I would like to apologize for making this quick, said Naruto as he channeled his Moketan chakra and began forming hand seals. Wood release. Secret technique. Nativity of world of trees. Sure do back up your words, kiddo. I like it. Kakazu grinned as his four other hearts separated from his body and went on their own ways. Then I'll sure you'll like the one next after all. 
It was used to defeat you. Wood release, advent of world of flowering trees. Kakuzu merely smirked and charged ahead. He swore other hearts with him. I trained to become immune to that. Fire release. Intelligent hard work. Wind release. Pressure damage. The name of your jutsu sucks, shouted Naruto as he hurried into safety. Taunting won't work on me, kid. Yes, but my jutsu is beginning to work now. I already told you I'm immune to the pollen's poison. Yes, but did you all really think that I didn't think I had? I figured you make yourself immune to the pollen effect, but you didn't have the means to become immune to the demon's chakra. Naruto grinned. It was very slow, but it was made faster due to the intense heat. Kakuzu could feel his body melt from the inside. Even if it made his body mended, he started that reattaching themselves also melted slowly. The effect should have worked after 10 minutes, but since you powered it, it hastened. You see, my demon's chakra fin is fire. With the intensive heat, your collaboration jutsu produced the demon chakra infused pollen transformed faster into demon mist, and you charged towards it. Kagazu smiled as he felt his connection to other hearts weaken. It wasn't common knowledge, but the man had learned and had always been patient after his defeats from the hands of Harish Hashirama. Kagazu may have been considered evil, but all he wanted was a rematch or a match against someone with Mokitan. He got in his wish and lost his fight, but he felt contented. The old Takinin smiled as that took over him. Well done. For his last words, Naruto gave a bow of respect before he took off and began channeling a huge amount of chakra. Sasuke, Hinata, Team Shukaku, Team Chame, Team Seiken, cover me, it's time. Naruto called to them, other their mental links as he reached his main center of the village. Near him were his families fighting the leaders of the opposing sides, General POV. As Naruto channeled his jutsu, Kushina kept Hiruzen busy while Minato fought Jiraiya. Sonade was holding off A while Orochimaru battled Oniki. In the Naruto began forming the hundred hand seals while Hinata and others protected him, and Sasuke, who was atop his perfect Susana, spread Amaterus everywhere with his the wall of the once great village. As Naruto got the hundred seal, the skies began to darken. Storm clouds began to form. Jiraiya, who was the sage more, felt the heavy concentration of nature around him. Looking up, he saw the skies filled with storm clouds that went dark violet from dark blue. He found the source of behind it, and his eyes landed on Naruto. He immediately recognized the threat. Unfortunately for him, he was still fighting Minato. Recognize it? Don't you? It was a great success. We made millions of money from it. After all, the movie was filmed on an actual war. Can you guess the movie's sequel? I'm not in the mood for your game. Stop him! Shirai shot it and pointed at Naruto's direction. Those who are battling around him took a glance and most recognized what was about to happen. The Uchihas with their sharing guns saw the heavy connection of chakra around and recognized the jutsu Naruto used against Toto army. Showed the ensuring the war victory in snow country they broke off from their current battles and went to stop naruto they could not as they were engaging the battle with hinata and the others and were quickly dealt with with uncle uncle who was still with the lee rest of the leaf populace underground nodded to tenzo who she saw naruto and his friends reached the center most part of the village tenzo along with the other 10 storm squads discreetly went to the hand seals and began to level the dome they were at the earth moved up and tore around the ground General PV, almost everyone halted their battles as the ground shook. A few moments later, a sealed dome within a lot of people inside appeared. They were easily recognized as the people of Konoha as it settled. The seal that held the people inside captive crumbled, allowing both entry and exit to the dome. Not soon after, the whole army of Fuzushio, Suna, and Oto were just gone in a flash, taking Oto with Obito with them. Bar 1. There was only an eerie silence as Naruto reached the 300 seal and clapped his hands together. Storm release! Judgment day! The elemental nations, the people who were watching the Chunin exams, turned into actual war, only heard crackles of lightning, howls of winds, and roars of fire. The screens on the television only showed orange, purple, and black flashes of, of lightning for 15 minutes. They were beyond terrified. When the storm finally died out, the screen showed a vast blackened wasteland. There were patches of earth here and there, but nobody would think there had been any kind of civilization before. And then they saw a moment. As the camera zoomed in, they recognized Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. He was once again forming hand seals and were on it for a while. Finally finished and collapsed out, hands together again. Outer path, samsara of heavenly life technique. And then the feed on that area finally ended for a moment. There was a black screen and showed a different place when it returned. Naruto's POV. Naruto watched as the area around him rumbled for a moment before dust particles rose to the air. Moments later, huge clouds formed above the former village and then began to pour down rain. It will be three days before the rain stopped and the ashes cleansed. New trees will begin to sprout on the fourth day until the area is back to its fourth state. 
without the villain standing atop it. You've done well. Naruto nodded calmly as the projection of the sage appeared. However, you still have one thing left to do. I've come to make that task doable to you. The sage of the six path then walked towards Naruto and tapped his forehead with his two fingers. Naruto closed his eyes as he felt power rush through him. After almost a minute, he once again opened his eyes. Gone were the purple's eyes. They were now red. The other addition was the nine tomos. There were three on each ring, making a triangular pattern like the Sharingan. Now go forth and fulfill that task, and there shall be peace. But how long would it last? A wonderful question. But alas, I myself do not know either. Could be ten, a hundred, or a thousand years after your death. And you wouldn't die just yet, for you shall live at least hundred years. When war breaks out again, your clan shall be there. After all, it is the Uzumaki's destiny. And oh, you shall be the one to speak with the third reincarnation, not me. After all, you're the second, and I was the one to speak to you. It's just a matter of succession, really. Really? Yeah. One thing for sure, though. I'll speak straight and not in riddles. The sage merely chuckled as his projection dissolved. You'll never know, though. After a few years, you might start speaking like a hermit. Krama joked, whatever, I'm technically your father now, right? Give me some respect. The folks howled in laughter as Naruto harshing back to Uzu. Normal POV, Uzushio Gakure. In a large open space, the armies of Whirlpool, Sand, Sound, and the Zetsu clones were gathered. On a stage platform were Kushina and Minato dragging a defeated and restrained Obito. Minato-sensei, I'm so sorry, Kushina-san. You once saw me as a son, please, I. Obito stopped as he realized neither Kushina nor Minato were listening to him. I see, so you... So my execution will be public, he asked as he noticed the camera glaring at him. The fate will be television, yet live, yes, but you know, will not be executed. Naruto said as he appeared on the stage, You plan to make a mockery out of me. Then, the Uchiha spat, No, I plan to make an example out of you, replied Naruto as the camera's focus on me. People of the elemental nations, shinobi and civilians alike, as you already know, the Uzumakis have been given the task to give, deliver peace to the world and it will continue to do so until the end of the time. Here in front of you is Obito Uchiha, a man who sought to destroy the five great elemental nations by plunging them into war. I need not to elaborate all his deeds, but his action has caused great and many deaths. I admit, yes, the Uzumaki clan have participated in this war too. Some of you may see it is an act of vengeance. Some will think we are simply doing our task. It's both. We have destroyed Konoha, Kiri, Kumo, and Iwa, while at the same time untying and uniting a lot of smaller nations and making alliances. Black and white, yin and yang, light and dark. One cannot exist without the other, but there also has to be a balance. The world has gone into four wars after the first sage passing, and counting from that time to present, it has been too long. There has to be balance, peace. This long war will come to an end today. Naruto walked forward and placed his hands on Obito's head. I, Naruto of the Uzumaki clan, Punish you, Obito Uchiha, for your crimes against the nature of balance. You should have died that day when the earth crushed you, but you didn't. You live to create more chaos. Your punishment isn't that. You have planned on enslaving and trapping the world with your Infinity Moon Eye plan. You shall then be placed in the undisclosed location while you view and experience all the pain and suffering everyone caused of your action. Beginning with the time you unleashed the nine-tailed fox and almost murdered an infant. You will watch and experience these memories in an unending loop until old age consumes you. You will not be able to break it because you will have no chakra. Obito's eyes widen in fear as he thought, you couldn't. You wouldn't. I can and I will. Naruto replied as his blue eyes changed into the red ringed ones. I am the second coming of the sage. He who brought the teaching of Ninshu and like him, I know how to take it away. But my chakra, a Sharingan, no. Please stop! Seven parts. Removal. A bit of cries of anguish were drowned out as he and Naruto became covered by white light. After a few moments, the light died out. There was Obito lying on the ground with his mouth slightly agaping, mumbling incoherent words. Naruto released his hold on the captive's head and nodded to Kaede, who in turn nodded to a pair of storms and dragged Obito away. This shall serve as a warning and a reminder to anyone who wishes to disrupt the balance that the Uzumakis are trying to achieve. It will be prudent if the elemental nations moved on forward in peace. The life's feed finally ended as Naruto's eyes returned to normal. Time skip. 18 months later, elemental nations. After the fourth shinobi war, the people of the elemental nations moved on. Citizens of Evo and Kumo made a pact. The two former hidden villages were now simply two trading cities, as there were few 
shinobi left when the Obito Ochiha's armies invaded. They were only fresh characters of Kenin. However, the two cities no longer planned on pursuing the once again becoming a shinobi or village regarding the shinobi village. They were still shinobis, but they now worked as police forces, protecting the now trading cities. The civilians of Karigakure have also made their peace with Uzumakis. The former mist village was now the part of the fourth city. Sunagakure remained a shinobi village and had good ties with the other shinobi factions. Spring and Sound Sound Village relocated to where Konoha Gakure formally stood six months after its destruction. Uzushio Gakure continued to progress and advance. It produced machineries and weaponry. Some minor villages said that they were preparing for war. They were true about it though, as it was the Uzumaki's obligation to keep the balance. While it won't be a permanent, they expected the peace to last long the same as the time covered by the war since the sage's death. One village however was bitter and were not willing to cooperate. Takigakure, ever since the loss of their Chinchurkis and Hirawata, the villagers were of all feeling resentful towards the Uzumakis. They were convinced that they were right to treat Fu unfairly, as she was only their weapon. The village councillors con went one week after Kona's destruction, but the Uzumakis didn't know. All clan heads and councillors have a lighter amount of heroes' water each. They pulled it up together and had their scientists work to reproduce it. Today's the day we attack the fourth city. We will show those Uzumakis scum Takigakure is not to be trifled with. Our scientists are successful at reproducing the hero's water, as well as changing its effect. The drinker will no longer die after taking it. The drinker will only feel drained for a whole day instead. It it's a lot better than dying, said the leader. Here's what we're going to do. Since our supply is enough for 3,000 individuals, we will attack thrice. On the first day, we will attack former snow, now spring country, and recapture there. On the third day, we invade fourth city and cut the Uzumakis off. We attack the first city on the seventh day. The people of Takikakuri all cheered, hearing the plans. The cheer died out, however, when a calm yet loud voice interrupted. A good plan! However, I cannot allow that to happen. You plan to kill lots of innocent and civilians. You'll be warned before. So I'm not going to talk you out of your plan. I am, however, going to a chance to those who are not in the plan. Nada crossed his arms and began to float in the air. Those who wish peace and not want to attack, please step out. I will give you my word. I will protect you. You will need to fear your fellow villagers. All the villagers grew silent and looked up at him. After a few minutes, nobody stepped out. We're not following you, said one. We did not take orders from outsiders, said another. You claim to be the second sage. I call bullshit. For all we could you know, you could have used some trick to light up the stage and place some Uzumaki seal on that Uchiha, said the leader. Yeah, you're a fake, said another. Go shove up your so-called piece on your arse, said another villager, causing everyone to laugh. I have no time for this, Naruto murmured to himself. Get on with it, Naruto. These people obviously have that fishes, right? You're right, Kurama. So, what you gonna do now, eh? Taunted the leader. There are a thousand of us and equipped with the Battle of Hero Waters. Ready to battle out. You're only one fucking shit has muttered Naruto. You're sounding like your cousin Tayuya. That's not fitting for us, eh? Sigurd Kurama. Whatever I'm done for. Ten Gai Shinsei. Six months later, the nine meters that struck down the former Kirigakure village was visible even from the highest towers in the Lightning Village. After that instant, all doubt regarding Naruto, Uzumaki being the second sage coming, was gone. Village civilian and shinobi alike have all come to peaceful agreements. Sure, there were minor scuffles, such as robberies or street fights, but not enough to cause an all-out war. It will be hundred years more before another great war breaks out. However, there was a small chance for it happen sooner. Time skip. Ten years later, Uzushio Gakure Hospital. A loud scream was heard. You're doing great. A little more, I am at Chan. Push! As I am screamed some more, the small voice of a newborn baby then suddenly was heard from the outside of the operating room. Congratulations, I am a Sama, not a Sama. A nurse greeted as she gently put down the bundle beside the mother. He has your hair, Nara said. What would his name be? The nurse asked. Menma replied, Ayame and Naruto both. Naruto smiled down at his newborn son and first wife. Yes, first wife. It was unexpected, but should have been expected by all. After all, Naruto was quite the charmer when he was younger, and he became more desirable as he aged. While Kushina and Tsunade despised perverts, they were accepting the fact that Naruto ended up having nine wives. At first, they thought that Naruto wasn't interested in females when he was still single four years ago. As it turned out, Naruto had feelings for Ayame, Hinata, Shion, Karin, Yakumo, Temari, Kin, Kyoki, and Hotaru, but was confused and didn't know who he should choose. Little did Naruto knew the girls he liked have already made an agreement to themselves and didn't make any kind of thoughts cross their mind of not sharing him. 
and so there were nine wedding celebrations. The order didn't base on who Naruto loved the most, but the girls agreed that he will marry them accordingly to the time they met. As Ayame was the first girl he met, she became the first wife, while Hotaro was the ninth. Naruto's second child to Ayame was born today, while Hinata, Shion, and Karin were ex were eight, six, and two months pregnant to their second child as well, respectively. Naruto already have one child with Yakumo, Temari, Kin, Koyoki, and Hotaru. Obviously, there would be a huge celebration today for the successful and safe delivery of Ayame and birth of Man Maozumaki, 10th child of the Uzukage. Kushina stepped down and passed the mentality to Naruto two years ago. Ayame still helped her father at the restaurant. Ishiraku grew more famous and now had a branch in the Fort City, former Wave Town. Inata, Shion, Karin, Yakuma, and Hotaru trained in their free time and helped Naruto in his work. Tamari served as the ambassador between Sand and Whirlpool. Kara became the Kazakage a year after the war. While Kankuro studied ancient puppetry and became known as the Black Puppeteer. The relationship between the Land of Spring, former Snow, and Whirlpool became stronger due to Kyoki's being married to Naruto. Kin also served as an ambassador his time between Sand and Sound and Whirlpool. Mio and Miho were not interested in leading a whole village and chose to pursue a mastery in the new technology and jutsu creation and combining them. Mio was now head of the technology advancement department while Miho was head of a jutsu research and recreation department. They haven't married yet so they insisted they will also marry twins. They were still looking for the love of their lives while they're working on their jobs. Narumi to sur everyone's surprise ended up with Deidara. They now had three children. Their elders was six years old and was now at grade three in the academy. The second child was four while the youngest was two old. All three were girls and had a fascination with blowing up and exploring things. While a bit eccentric, Deidara turned out to be an amazing father. Minako married a native from the former lands of demons and now had two child, child with her, both male four and two year old respectively. Yahiko and Conan got married and had one child. Nagato was godfather of the now eight-year-old son. Nagato was still looking for a wife. He kept himself busy with his duty as a kage of the third city. Toby, apprenticed under Tsunade, as a medic fulfilled his dreams to save people's lives. Lee joined the monks at the fire temple and later replaced Chikoro as the new head. Another surprise was Sasuke ended up marrying Fu and Tayuya. He now had one child with each wife. Yujito returned to now the Mel materialized Kumogakura and visited Verbal from time to time. B, on the other hand, was now renowned to the world as a singer and songwriter. He was currently on the world tour and had millions of fans. His first album had been released a year ago and earned him millions. All in all, the villages and cities lived in harmony. There were no quarrels or misunderstanding. While there were alliances formed, they were for trading and advancement purposes. All was well. As this is where I'm going to be ending the story of guys. I hope you like this one. And if you do, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel and tell me a new idea of what should replace this story as a new series. Okay, and yeah guys, the story is ended here. Hope you like this one. And this is Apollo Chiha and I am signing out.